We will call the governing board meeting of the Lammersville Unified School District Board to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed. We ask that you silence or turn off your cell phones at this time. For those of you that, who are here to address the board about a specific agenda item and or during public comment, please fill out a blue comment card located in the back of the room so we know when to call upon you. I believe we have students from Quest Elementary here to lead us in the pledge. Will you please come forward? Okay, ready and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And at this time, we'd like to invite Quest, Mr. Vieira, the principal of Cuesta, up with his students. Good evening, Board President Olson, trustees of the Lammersville School District, and Superintendent Dr. Nicholas. Um, we've had a great year at Cuesta. Um, our leadership um, students are here to speak to you about some of the activities that we've had. Um, but, but before I introduce them, I'd like to recognize uh, Ms. Dielmont. She's our new ASB teacher for the year. Um, she's taken over that responsibility. She's done an amazing job, and she's really worked to build on the culture that was already established. We had a great March Madness week last week. Um, and she'll talk, or some of the students will talk more about that in just a moment. So I'd like to introduce our ASB officer team, Bhuvani, Anvi, Mackenzie, and Tapnor. Good evening, everyone. I am Anvi Patnala, Vice President of Cuesta ASB. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to the months of August and September. We started off our school year by welcoming our fellow students to campus on their first day of school. Next, we held ASB officer elections, and I am proud to stand here as your elected vice president. Followed by our first Menchie's fundraiser, everyone loved an ice cream treat and scorching California heat. Our annual fun run was a massive success as we managed to raise over $40,000, and our hard work was able to help us fund many field trips. Cuesta Fest, our first dance of the year, was a hit among middle schoolers, and we had an absolute blast. Lastly, we showcased our patriotic spirits by wearing red, white, and blue. Hi, everyone. I'm Mackenzie, and I am the ASP secretary. So we started out on October with our homecoming parade. Our theme was Back to the Future, and we won third place. We then carried on to Red Ribbon Week, and we had many wonderful spirit days. We then had our haunted house and fall carnival, then our volleyball games, and we ended off with the ace, our first ace assembly. Hi everyone, my name is Bhavani, I'm the ASB president. Um, in the months of December and January, we had our second ace assembly. Uh, we had the first bas basketball games of the season. Um, the Deck the Hall Spirit Week, followed by the Reindeer Run with Snow. During that week, we had many fun spirit days and fun activities for the kids. And we also had 101 Dalmatian Day, followed by many other activities as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Tapnoor Jahal. I am the social media coordinator for Cuesta. So following into February, we started off the week with Valentine's Grams. And then we had our basketball finals for our girls and boys teams and they did an amazing job. Then we had Kindness Week, and for Super Bowl, we had Football Friday, which was a spirit day. Then we had March Madness, where there was like a lot of activities for the kids, and they had so much fun. And we um, ended off pretty strong with the Never Glow Up Dance, which is for TK to fifth grade, and we sold, I think, more than 200 tickets for like $8 each, so we had profit there too. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, we, um, we, we, again, thank you for being here on behalf of the entire board. And we know that you have a lot of activities going on. So you're welcome to stay for our riveting meeting. However, if you do need to go home and do homework or other activities, this would be a great time to, uh, to be excused now. So thank you again very much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item three, roll call. Lisa Boulay. Here. Colin Clements. Here. 
Anita Daniel. Here. Stephanie Olson. Here. David Pombo. Here. Devika Vitalani. Here. Moving on to agenda item four, approval and or corrections to the agenda. There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Based on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Boulay, student trustee preferential vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with five ayes. Moving on to item five, committee reports. Item A, district advisory committee. Trustee Boulay. Nothing to report. Item B, district English language advisory committee. Trustee Clements. The next uh, DLAC committee meeting is a joint meeting with the Education Committee and will take place on April 18th, 6.30 p.m. in the Professional Development Center. Item C, Education Committee, Trustee Pombo. The, the Education Committee met last night and I had a private audience with S Assistant Superintendent Sharp as she gave presentations on LCAP and <laughs> the CASP scores. <laughs> and by that I mean I was the only person there other than her. One-on-one <laughs> <laughs> -on -one attendance, that's good. Item D, Facilities Committee, committee that's me, and there is nothing to report. Item E, Policy Committee, Trustee Daniel. Nothing to report. Item F, Safety Committee, Trustee Pombo. Yes, the uh, Safety Committee met on March 13th, we got um, reports, site reports from all the sites on the different safety related things they're doing, safety drills and, and the like. We discussed the upcoming safety drill at, at Mountain House High School and future, future goals for, for um, the committee and our next meeting will be for the um, safety drill subcommittee it will be on the 21st at Mountain House High School. Thank you. Item G, wellness committee, that's me. Uh, the next wellness committee meeting is on April 17th, 2024 at 345 p.m. in the profes <coughs> Professional Development Center. Moving on to item six, governing board reports. Student trustee Vitalani. Uh, good evening, esteemed board members. To start my updates, I would like to start from club updates. So DECA students who competed at the um, California State Career Development Conference in Anaheim um, had, did a wonderful job. They had over 10 students who placed. And over these 22 events at this prestigious state competition, and the students who placed and earned the esteemed opportunity to compete at the international uh, competition which is coming up in April. Speech and debate had their state champ state competition which was which is coming up in April and we also had a successful national qualifier competition. For ASP updates we had the Blacklight Rally and Spirit Days last week and it was an amazing experience. It was extremely entertaining rally with extraordinary teacher dance which was definitely the crowd favorite. And under the black lights, the teachers showcase their dance moves along with synergy and of course cheer. Uh, recently, leadership class results were released and the student body eagerly awaits the new fresh energy and ideas that the newly elected leaders will bring to our school. We also had Pi Day, which was of course a huge success where students were able to pie their favorite teachers in a laughter filled celebration. We also have culture night coming up on April 12th to celebrate the diversity at Mountain House. So clubs will be able to either set up booths where they can sell different um, things such as merch, arts and crafts, have games, or they can perform. And we are extremely excited to see what our diverse Mountain House community comes up with. And Powder Puff is tomorrow. Everyone is super excited as the boys have been practicing their cheerleading skills and the girls have been working hard on the field. And I wish all the participants best of luck and mostly to the junior girls, because of course they're gonna win. <laughs> for additional high school updates, congrats to Donovan Rudish for becoming the 2024 to 2025 outreach director for the castle. And additionally, the counselor team this uh, past few days has been working extremely hard to provide multiple opportunities and resources for students who are really anxious for college. So this includes the college week, night, and fairs. For middle school and elementary updates, just a quick congratulations to Natalie and Vivian as they recently got accepted as finalists to run for the Castle Board. That concludes my report for tonight. Thank you.
Thank you. Trustee Daniel. On March 9th, I visited the Saturday school. On March 10th, I had a great time at the pancake and dosa <coughs> breakfast uh, fundraiser supporting the Mountain House High School Music Department. On March 20th, that's today, I attended the fourth and fifth grade trimester award ceremony at Hanson. And that ends my report. Thank you. Trustee Pombo. Yes, on March 7th, I was a guest reader at Wickland School for Ms. Soria's four, four or five special day class. It's a lot of fun reading to and interacting with the students. On March 10th, I attended the Pancake and Dosa breakfast at Mountain House High School to benefit the music department or the music club. On March 12th, Vice Principal Clegg and Principal Pacheco hosted my site visit at Costa Elementary. On March 13th, I met with representatives from Assemblyman Villapudwa's office along with other PSBA representatives to um, help them understand the needs of school districts in this area especially the need for that our district has that they pass a a school bond in 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 November that they get one on the ballot and it passes in November and then um, I had another meeting with representatives from from Senator State Senator Eggman's office where we <coughs> discussed the same the same items Later that day, Principal Duran hosted me for a site visit at Lammersville Elementary. And then I attended the safety committee meeting on March 14th. Principal McDonald gave me a tour of Cordes Elementary for my site visit there. Then in the evening, I went to a community meeting in College Park where the Developer um, spoke to the to the residents about about the school and the parks and and things coming in in College Park. On March 18th, uh, Principal Perez hosted me for a site visit at Wickland. On the 19th, Principal Ritchie hosted me for a site visit at Bethany. And then in the afternoon, Principal Vieira gave me a tour of Cuesta Elementary. I attended the Lammersville Elementary School Site Council and, and Foundation meetings, and then went to the aforementioned Education Committee meeting for my one-on-one. -on -one. And then on, earlier this evening, I attended the Family Night of Inclusion at Wickland School. And I didn't say a lot about all those events, but I very much enjoyed spending time with teachers, students, and families at all those events. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Trustee Clements. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to remind the board that I will be missing both of the meetings in June. Um, I think this is the first time that I've missed more than one meeting in a row. Um, I did inform the board of this trip over a year ago when my family and I booked it, but it's now paid for and non-refundable, so we are going. Um, I will be doing extensive learning on the history of you know, Roman history, Greek history, and Turkish history. So, Madam President, I, was, I would like to request um, independent study for those <laughs> two board meetings. Are, are you submitting that in, in advance, well enough in advance? <laughs> <laughs> two months. I'm just joking. All right, that concludes my report. Madam. Thank you, Trustee Clemens. Trustee Boulay. 
Thank you. On March 10th, I also attended the high school um, pancake and dosa breakfast to raise funds for the jazz band. Um, and the band, the jazz band was there playing some awesome music. Um, the food was great. And so I do hope this is an annual event because I'll be there next year as well. On March 12th, um, I happened to be at Wickland during lunchtime and I was able to see our new waste disposal system for food waste. Direct, Director Dixon was there and he was showing our littlest kids, our TK and kindergarten kids, how to use the system and how to put um, their food waste in correct container. So that was fun to see. On March 13th, I attended the Mountain House um, Community Services District meeting, which in a couple months will be Mountain House Town Council, City Council, I guess. Um, to give updates on um, things that are happening in our school district. On March 15th, I attended the blood drive at the high school. Um, and this blood drive was really a, a blood drive for students primarily. And so there were a lot of first time students there. And so I was excited to see that. There's always a blood shortage. So I hope these students will continue to make regular donations. And then in the afternoon, I attended um, the BSU versus staff basketball game at the high school. That game was a lot of fun. There was lots of playful antics, um, lots of three-pointers from the students, not so many three-pointers from, um, from the staff. However, and although the staff looked really, really tired, I think this was the first um, student versus staff basketball game that they actually won. It was a very close game, but um, it was a lot of fun. On the 18th, I went to the high school boys tennis match. Our boys continue to play strong. They won their match with a score of eight to one. And then earlier this evening, I attended the um, Wickland School Foundation Inclusion Week family night. Um, I saw um, Trustee Pombo there and um, they always put on a great event with lots of activities for the kids. Um, and so thanks to all the this, um, parents and staff who work hard to put that together. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Um, going off of something uh, Trustee Daniel said, uh, I dropped my daughter off at Saturday school on March 9th, and um, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I bring that up because as a parent, you know, they give us three days to call in an absence, and my daughter was actually sick both of those days, and, and my husband did drop the ball, and, and I said, well, you know, that's on us, but you got to go to Saturday school because, <laughs> so um, I, I was also there for a brief moment. <laughs> uh, on March 10th, I attended the, the pancake dosa breakfast and uh, for the music and also concur that the jazz band there was awesome. I love that the music teacher is taking that initiative to get a jazz band at the high school. And uh, it, was, it was a lovely event and I hope they raised a lot of money. On March 11th, along with Dr. Nicholas, uh, I attended the county board meeting to conclude the um, approvals necessary for the CVRA. And on March 13th, I attended the safety committee meeting with Trustee Pombo. And on March 15th, I attended the Cuesta, or I was invited to observe the Cuesta Penny Wars at lunch. And as a bonus, I was also, unbeknownst to me, Mr. Vieira was also getting pied for a, for a previous fundraiser. So um, I got to see him get pied in the face and I got to watch students uh, trying to sabotage other grade levels um, in, a, in a Penny Wars game so that they could win, win the contest. And I have to say what a great idea that healthy competition raised $5,000 for QSF. And just wanted to uh, note my appreciation for all of the school foundations at all of the school sites that work really hard to, to, to earn money for our students. And I think that's the first time I've heard um, let's blow up the TK without that being something, you know, like negative. Like they, that meaning they were going to put all their, their silver money in the TK jugs because they were winning. <laughs> so um, it was really competitive, but um, it was really fun to watch. And um, just kudos to our, our administrators out, out there in the district who are willing to get pied in the face and kiss a pig or, and do other things to raise money for our students. Um, and that concludes my report. Agenda item seven, receiving of public comments. <coughs> the entire board appreciates hearing from members of the community and public at large. The board shall give members of the public an opportunity to address the board either before or during the board's consideration of each agenda item, government code section 54954.3. At a time so designated on the agenda, members of the public may also bring before the board matters that are not, not listed on the agenda of a regular meeting. 
the board may refer such a matter to the superintendent or designee or to take it under advisement, but shall not take action at that time. The board may place the matter on the agenda of a subsequent meeting for discussion or action. Individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the board on each agenda or non-agenda item. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. And I have one blue comment card here from uh, Dilip Krishnan. Um, you may come forward now. Hi, um, uh, trustees, uh, president, clerk, and superintendent, and my dear uh, fellow, and uh, my uh, kids who represent uh, Mountain House Cricket Academy, they are here with me, along with, uh, my name is Dilip Gopal Krishnan, and this is coach uh, Jaswinder Paul. So we represent Mountain House Cricket Academy. Mountain House Cricket Academy is a non-profit uh, academy in Mountain House for development of youth cricket since April 2023. Uh, we are International Cricket Council trained and certified coaches, we two of us who run the academy. We train kids from age uh, 5 to 16 and uh, the academy has close to 30 plus members who train with us, which are mostly kids ranging from the age 5 to 16. Kids, part, kids uh, will participate in USA cricket matches starting this season. And the kids can train and represent US cricket at all levels, zonal and national level, when we train them. Basic infrastructure which is needed for cricket, uh, we need a ground that is level 50 to 60 feet in radius from the center. It's a circle or an oval. It needs an artificial turf or grass, which has maybe a inch max thickness and an area secluded for fence for protection. The center pitch where the ball actually pitches in this case, not unlike baseball that is a, doesn't pitch on the ground. Cricket needs the ball to pitch on the ground. It needs that pitch, which is close to 10 feet width and close to 100 feet in uh, uh, length. Needs a level surface. It can be an artificial turf or leveled clay with a heavy roller. Currently, an, an the only uh, there are other forms of cricket that happen in mountain house which the adults slash women cricket play which is very different from the youth cricket which we are doing for kids the ground used in those cricket is a baseball ground where we need a cricket bound of the dimension and things which i presented before my colleague Jesse will start the rest of the uh, presentation because the time limit. Hi, my name is Jaswinder. So as Dilip mentioned, Wait, hold I'm on. Wait, we're going to get that to st um, start for a new comment. What, and, um, if you wouldn't mind filling out a card as well when you're finished, that would be great. Okay. Uh, so I, as as Dilip mentioned, I'm the other coach. You know, uh, my name is Jaswinder. Uh, so as Dilip mentioned everything, you know, in it. Um, so the baseball, the current uh, adult or the women who are playing, they are playing with a tennis ball. It's a hard tennis ball, not like a conventional tennis ball, uh, which can be played on a, a normal baseball ground because the chances of injury is very less. Uh, whereas the cricket that these kids play, they play with the actual hard ball, uh, cricket ball, which is made of <coughs> leather. Uh, so they can get hurt. Although they use all the gears and everything, but if they play on a baseball ground, uh, they, they, there are chances of injury to them. Uh, and we need a level surface, as Dilip mentioned, uh, the length and the breadth of the pitch and the surface that we need. So uh, we cannot play it on a clay pitch or a dirt uh, that Dilip mentioned. So, so uh, 
this we have two times two types of uh, requests here one is a short term request that we have is to grant access to us for the mountain house high school football stadium um for weekends uh, that's just for the kids games because we are still we can practice on these uh, baseball kind of ground but we cannot play games on uh, the you know dirt or the baseball grounds that we have um and foot and football uh, ground or the football stadium for the high school uh, is the only infrastructure in mountain house uh, that currently meets the safety uh, you know requirements that is required for the hardball cricket that kids can play uh so that's a short term uh, request from us and then uh, the long term is that uh, this evelyn costa uh, school cricket ground is under construction um so we request lusd to provide the details of its availability and if it will meet the requirements you know uh, from pitch and ground point of view uh, for youth cricket uh so mhca uh, we want to work with lusd uh, you know uh, Uh, in making the above you know ground viable for youth cricket so we request the board to consider that so thank you thank you on behalf of the entire board board we thank you for your comments and and i believe this sounds like a, an issue to be addressed with by the facilities committee um and there's a uh, thorsten harrison and jason dixson who would be um great contacts for for that and thorsten is right over there thank you thank you um Moving on to action item 8, consent items for consideration. Actions proposed for consent are consistent with the approved practices of the district and are deemed routine in nature. Trustees receive board agenda background information in advance of scheduled meetings and are prepared to vote with knowledge on the consent items. Item A, governing board meeting minutes. Item B, contracts under $50,000. Item C, ratification of certificated and classified personnel actions. Item D, updated 2023-2024 fundraisers. Item E, ratification of school-sponsored overnight trips. Item F, ratification of 2023-2024 inter and intra-district transfer requests. Item G, ratification of 2024-2025 inter-district transfer requests. Item H, acceptance of donation. One pre-owned, how do you pronounce that? Gemindheart flute from Allison Ordner for student use at Bethany Elementary School. Estimated value of the flute fifteen hundred dollars. And item two, one thousand dollars from Lammersville School Foundation for fourth and eighth grade field trips, five hundred dollars each at Lammersville Elementary School. Does any board member wish to poll or further discuss any of the consent items? I would just like to. I don't want to pull pull the item but I would like to make a comment on item B. I feel that the state of California needs to look at the California Voter Rights Act and rein in the the ability of outside people, outside individuals to um force districts to spend money for for no reason just because it's legal and uh I plan to bring this up with the CSBA reps and hopefully we can we can push it forward in the state legislature to to get some guidelines in place because it's uh I believe it's inappropriate Thank you, Trustee Pombo. Any Move to approve consent items for consideration. And Second. I, agreed. I agree, Trustee Pombo. Uh, based on a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Boulay, student trustee preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with five ayes and no noes. And, and Madam Clerk, as our, yes, will you please do the honors? <laughs> I would love to. So I would like to welcome the following um, new employees to Lammersville. Sharon Av Avinash, High School Staff Secretary. Melissa Hartvigson, Administrative Assistant One. Kayla Hutton, Behavior Specialist. And John LaGruta, K-8 Lead Custodian. Welcome to the Lammersville family. Welcome. Moving on to item nine, District Administrative Reports. Item A, Superintendent's Report. 
Yeah, I just have some fun things to announce. Uh, the Every month, the uh, San Joaquin County Office of Ed sends out a periodical uh, magazine uh, featuring all kinds of exciting educational information. But uh, we had a student who uh, did very well in the academic decathlon. He also did very well. And we announced, uh, I want to say it was the Science Olympiad. Well, Jordan Priora uh, was the top overall scoring student, again, with a, a, a fellow student from another uh, district. So congratulations to him. We also have our elementary division winner, uh, Arush Narahari uh, from Peter Hansen School. A sixth grader uh, won his division in the spelling B. And then um, it was, uh, we have a couple of young ladies who are in the process of becoming stars in the CASEL program, which uh, CASEL is the California Association of School Leaders. Um, and uh, they were awarded the service award uh, just recently for a winter project they did to raise money for McHenry House and raised nearly $900 to assist with the needs of that, um, that program. And they are also up for um, uh, some important positions in the council program. Uh, uh, Natalie Navarro and Vivian Zhang. Uh, one, Natalie will be going for the, uh, or she's the ASB president and one's the social media director. But um, Nat or Natalie is going for the freshman director position and Vivian is going for the council social media director. So we wish them the best of luck and we'll know um, sometime uh, before April 13th. And the final thing, and um, uh, student trustee Vitalani uh, kind of did a shout out already, but uh, Donovan Ruddish, who is in that current position, um, just won an award for the 2025 Outreach Director for Castle. So uh, between she and I sandwiching this information, and we have lots of kids to celebrate. Um, and then we have a picture. Um, so cross country, it's an interesting sport. Um, but I, I've had a, a chance, one of my, of my children uh, runs cross country at the high school level, and I've observed it a little bit. And one of the neat things for kids is um, not every kid can dunk a basketball, not every kid likes to tackle in football or kick a soccer ball. Um, but if you want to participate in an athletic sport, uh, there's nothing better than um, running because all kids have energy to run, or most kids. So we had our first cross country meet today, um, and these are a couple of pictures from the competitors. And uh, this is our first endeavor into cross country, but um, I think for kids that wanna participate in a sport who aren't um, passionate about a particular sport, uh, this is a good place for kids to go. So I'm glad that we don't have at uh, um, elementary school level cross country. I know we have a competitive cross country team at the high school and now we have a yet another feeder program. So congratulations to all who have put that together. And Madam President, that is my report. Thank you. Item B, district enrollment report, staff report. Uh, yes, our current enrollment is 7,852 uh, enrolled students, and we have started the process of guessing what the enrollment will be next year. I can say that all of the participants so far have picked a number that starts with eight. Wow. Thank you. Item C, District Maintenance and Operations Report. Good evening. Thanks for having me. First up, I have an operations report from Director Jason Dixon. Um, we have four openings in custodial, inter custodial, and interviews for all positions are this Thursday and Friday. Uh, they have plans for clean over spring break have been made, and that's it for that report. Um, I reported, we reported last time, we had a pinhole gas leak at Altamont uh, that was fixed within 48 hours. pg and came back out to verify there is no leak, so we're good to go there. I also reported, or we also reported last time, that there was a domestic water leak in the C building at the high school. That was fixed. It took two tries to fix it, but it is fixed now, so that's good to go. We uh, have our EPIC interns on Thursdays. Uh, you may recall last month we added another intern. I did an interview today of a young student at the high school this afternoon, so we're bringing on our new intern starting tomorrow. That brings our total to four, and they'll be doing uh, – working on the athletic fields at the high school, mainly baseball, softball, be their primary focus out there. Um, speaking of spring sports, they're in full swing right now. Juan and Arturo, our grounds guys are very busy. And just to give you a sense of what they deal with on a weekly basis, last week there were four softball games, JV Varsity, three baseball games, JV Varsity, and eight of the K-8 soccer games. 
And then this week, in addition to those three sports, swimming, tennis, and track also have events at, at home this week. So they're busy. I want to thank uh, Athletic Director Renee Nunn. She's very good about texting me about schedule changes, especially with the weather we had a few weeks ago. She keeps me updated. We text often, so that's been really good. Um, so far, we have all the irrigation off, thank God. Is, I'm, I'm trying to keep it off as long as possible. It's supposed to rain this weekend. I hope it gets a lot of rain, so we keep it off at least another week. Um, but if it, we don't get a lot of rain, we'll probably turn on next week, which makes my life a lot more complicated. Um, the pool <laughs> has been difficult the last couple weeks. Um, the other heaters started leaking. Heater number two tripped out on high limit, which is a safety feature. Um, the pool vacuum itself is causing problems and won't come on all the time. That's getting service. Um, the alkaline level was low, so um, I had to get about 350 pounds of baking soda and put that in the pool. Jesus and I did that to bring the alkaline level up. Um, and we're still waiting for the new autofill valve. But other than that, everything is great at the pool. <laughs> um, you may recall that uh, we it looks like we have a leak in the closed loop system, a loops boiler system at the high school. We're bringing in a leak detection company next week to try and find it when no one's around. It needs to be quiet. They have headphones and try to find the leak. Um, on Monday, March 4th, I met with the principal of the high school and the athletic director. Our meeting was supposed to be next Monday, but it was canceled for spring break, so we're not meeting again until April 1st. Updating our projects, we're dealing with some warranty issues at Costa. Um, there's two pieces of kitchen equipment that are malfunctioning a little bit, waiting for the company to come out and fix that. Last Friday, I got a call. There was a domestic water leak right in front of the multi, water coming out of the, the, in the concrete. I notified the contractor. They had their subcontractor come out last weekend, cut out a decent-sized triangle piece of concrete, and fixed it over the weekend. And the concrete was patched back yesterday, so it's all back to normal. And then we put a gate in on the west side of the field so the community could access the cricket field mainly, and two of the hinges, the welds broke. So I notified them yesterday. They came out today to fix that, so that's good to go. And they're also going to help me. Uh, the gate was designed without the ability to really lock the bottom, so if you could just take and push it open, even if it's latched. So they're going to help me come back tomorrow and fix that and fix the other gate on the softball field on the south side of campus. So that's going to get fixed. I asked for no charge, so we'll see what happens about that. So, um, the Cuesta and Bethany Playgrounds, the board approved that last month. That work is being scheduled for the summer, so that's a go. The site trip housing surveys that we did in the fall, some of that work is starting next week during spring break when no one's around. The windscreens that the board approved at, at last month, those have been ordered. We're waiting for those to come in for the pool and the tennis courts at the high school. Uh, the Lamersville Kitchen Remodel Project, um, the RP is done. Thor and Gloria reviewed it. I had a couple typos that I had to fix. I'm going to review with Thor again tomorrow on one-on-one, -on -one, then we'll put it out on the street. Um, and then the plan is to bring it to the board of April 17th with the results and then get the work done this summer for Bernie. That's at the Lammersville Kitchen. Upcoming items, next week's spring break, we have a, some things planned that are hard to do when students are here. Um, we're going to spray some weeds, do some other things easier when the kids aren't here. I also found out yesterday Keenan might be in the district next Tuesday. Um, they have to do a property insurance appraisal, which means they do it every five years apparently. And they're gonna visit every school and every building to assess what we have. So hopefully it doesn't take more than a day or two of my time next week. Uh, and also this room, the boardroom, is getting an equipment upgrade next week. The electrician's coming in Friday, working through the weekend and working all next week to get that done. This is IT's project, this is totally Sean's project. I'm just helping out getting the, I know the electrician, he did the work at Quest and Altamont. I'm helping him get access and anything else he may need the whole time he's here. And then staffing update for us, uh, our last candidate didn't work out for our maintenance and ground position. Ruben and I interviewed today, interviewed four candidates, and we're hoping to have the position filled hopefully by next month. And that's all I have. Thank you for your report. Any questions for Mr. Ray? Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 10, action items. Item A, consider approval of Measure L General Obligation Bonds Financial and Performance <coughs> Audit Report, June 30th, 2023. Staff report. 
Uh, yes. So uh, first of all, um, it, when we passed uh, Measure L, it was done under the Prop 51 provision of you could get 55% approval um, instead of uh, the higher number. And in doing so, we uh, committed to having a citizens bond oversight committee. And I wanted to acknowledge uh, Mr. Saif Islam, who is the chair of our CBOC, who is here to acknowledge uh, the following item, which is the audit report, which is a man mandatory annual report um, that uh, we have met all the provisions of the audit. There are no findings. Move to approve the Measure, measure L General Obligation Bonds Financial and Performance Audit Report, June 30, 2023. And thank you very much for your service, sir. Second. On a motion by Trustee Clements and seconded by Trustee Pombo. Student trustee preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with five ayes, and I'd like to echo that. Thank you so much for your service on the committee. Moving on to item B, consider approval of the second interim financial report for the 2023-2024 school year. Staff report? Uh, yeah, this is the third leg of the uh, whole annual um, budgetary process. The key piece is, is that um, positive certification means we can pay our bills this year and the two out years. And we want to say thank you to Assistant Superintendent Grijalva and Fiscal Director um, uh, Alavina. Sorry, man. <laughs> Kaiser. I've known you forever. So um, let me try that again. Uh, Fiscal Director Kaiser because it's Director of, of Fiscal Services and my brain glitched on that. And then I was like, well, I didn't say that right. And then I went back and realized I forgot Alvina's last name. So I apologize to all my face is red and that's all I have to say at this point. Move to approve the second interim financial report for the 2023-2024 school year. And I would also like to echo all the hard work that um, the team did on this. Thank you. Second. On a motion by Trustee Boulay and seconded by Trustee Daniel, student trustee preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with five ayes and no noes. Moving on to item C. Uh, consider approval of category 2E rating funding, year 2024-2025 technology network infrastructure expenses and contract with AMS.net for network equipment and ins installation. Staff report. Uh, yes, this takes some Fed dollars and um, lowers the rates for us. Uh, we recommend approval. Move to approve Category 2 E-rate funding year 2024-2025 technology slash network infrastructure expenses and contract with AMS.net for network equipment and installation. Second. On a motion by Trustee Boulay and seconded by Trustee Pombo, student trustee preferential vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes with five ayes and no noes. Moving on to item 11, information and discussion items. Item A, parking lot permits, Mountain House High School. Staff report? Uh, yeah, we'll introduce uh, Principal Adam Arbach, who's going to uh, give tonight's presentation. Good evening, President Olson, uh, members of the board, Dr. Nicholas. Um, here representing the high school um, uh, to talk to you about our uh, parking lot permit uh, situation here. We're looking at re-implementing permits at the high school. It's been a number of years, uh, though I've only been with the district for this current school year. Uh, we, this is uh, looking back at a practice to, to ensure the safety and security of our staff and our students. Uh, quick introduction, uh, like I said, history, uh, comprehensive high schools. Um, ultimately, the, the need that you're going to hear me reiterate a few different times here is the need to be able to identify who is on campus at all times. For us, over the years, that's, that's come in form uh, building additional security infrastructure in terms of campus supervisors, uh, the gates that surround the high school, uh, creating choke points so that visitors are funneled into the front of the school to ensure that we know who is on our campus at all times. Uh, one of the measures we're looking at taking for the upcoming school year is implementing a parking permit policy. We used to have one of those up until the 2019-20 school year uh, and the, the start of the pandemic. I think coming back from the pandemic, uh, there was uh, just never a reinvention of that, that policy that we had before. Uh, and at this point in time, we're looking to make sure that we can identify all the vehicles that are on campus. Uh, I, I'll speak to some of that history that we've run into this year in just a moment. But ultimately, it's ensuring that, uh, that we know what students are on campus and we can identify by vehicle type uh, who, whose car belongs to who while they're on our campus. 
the benefits, I'll speak to real quickly. We talked about safety and security that I mentioned before, uh, the convenience and efficient parking. As we grow in number, obviously we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be looking at how much capacity we have to expand in our parking lot. If you're there now, you know there's probably more electric scooters than there are cars. Uh, but as we're looking ahead of the future, we're wanting to make sure that we're able to account for having enough spots for students so that we are not jam-packed and having students overflow into our streets, uh, especially being that the outlying uh, parking is limited in our neighborhoods. Uh, emergencies, uh, again, when there's when the emergencies that take place in cars uh, and having to do with those uh, the back and forth with student drivers, we want to make sure that we can be able to properly identify who the vehicles belong to. Uh, one circumstance I'd speak to during the school year was a driver, uh, student driver this year had run into a staff member's car. Uh, it appeared uh, via the video, the student was unaware of hitting that staff member's car, but we were unable to identify that car. It took exhaustive efforts in order to understand who that student was because we do not currently have a database of what cars are in our parking lot by make and model, and this would assist in uh, identifying who those folks are. Uh, types of permits we're looking to advocate for would be staff, student, and visitors. Uh, staff parking permits, uh, essentially allocating particular lots. If you've driven onto our campus, you know that the, uh, uh, the first lot you'll see on your right when you come in our main entrance is for staff, and we're looking to reallocate the back parking lot simply for staff. Uh, the student parking lot is the north lot, the larger lot underneath the solar panels. That would be strictly for students. And then visitors in the front, we're looking to reestablish that as a visitor parking only space uh, for uh, both uh, members of the, of the school board, our uh, visitors from other sites on district, uh, and then our students and parents uh, or adult students and parents who are, who are coming to visit for IEP and uh, parent-teacher conferences, et cetera. Uh, the how to apply piece. Uh, we've become pretty adept at using Google Forms in order to solicit opportunities for students to submit their, their information to us. Uh, we'd be providing a Google Form to our students as soon as uh, next school year, the start of the year. I've got a timeline here for you in just a minute, but they'll submit the following, their vehicle make, model, and color, a uh, copy of their driver's license and proof of insurance, just ensuring that all the drivers who are on campus with us are in fact insured uh, to ensure the orderly, uh, uh, I should say, safety of our, of our student drivers. Uh, and lastly, parent permission. We want to make sure that parents know their kids are driving themselves as well. Uh, cost and payment options, uh, which you'll see on the document provided to you, is $5 for a parking permit. At this time, it's just covering the cost. Uh, it's covering the cost of the, the outlay of buying those permits. At this point in time, they're about $4.89 per permit, so we're just looking to recover that cost. Uh, if we were to go back in time about seven, eight years ago, I think the cost was somewhere around the $25 mark. It was used as an off opportunity to fundraise for the school. We're not advocating for that at this point in time. We don't intend to have students out there cleaning up our parking lot to earn their ASB dollars. We're just simply looking to be able to cover the cost of the permits themselves. Uh, how will students pay? They'll be through the online ASB store or in our student store. Uh, and for students who can't afford uh, the opportunity for a parking permit, the permit, the school will purchase those for those folks. Rules and regulations, I won't go through all these uh, in, uh, in detail, but rather quick. Uh, again, we're going back to the safety of our students. Uh, we're making sure that permits are, permits are displayed at all times. So the process for that is going to be ultimately having our campus supervisors um, uh, patrolling the parking lots to ensure as we begin this process that they are on every dashboard. Uh, ultimately, this is going to be a process of reminders, parent square messaging, communications over our loudspeakers to ensure that our students remember to pick up their parking permits uh, in the, and that they are parking in the designated zones, making sure that they follow our traffic laws, that there is no reckless driving. Uh, the consequences at this point in time would be the same that would apply at that time for students who are, uh, who are a danger to themselves or others in the parking lot, that we'd ask them that they if they change their behavior and if they do fail to comply, that we'd ask them not to park in our parking lots. So the consequences there, simply put, is that we want to make sure that student drivers who are in our lots are safe drivers. We can identify them at any given time and communicate with families on a needed basis. Timeline, uh, we brought this to the LUSD Safety Committee for approval. That was in November of this last year, uh, looking for school board approval. That's this presentation here tonight, the 20th of March. Uh, step three would be to purchase permits, um, and that would be happening in July if given approval from the board. Uh, we'd communicate with uh, Mountain House families uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, hopefully by the end of June, if we were to receive approval, we'd communicate about the expectations for the upcoming school year so that families can be aware uh, and have that opportunity to buy those permits uh, when they get, uh, when they get uh, uh, to be a part of our roundup at the end of July. Uh, step four is collecting student information via those Google Forms. That's the beginning of August, and that'll extend, I would say, the first couple of weeks of the school. But if I'm a student driver and I get my driver's license in October, obviously that window is open throughout the year so long as space is provided for us to continue accepting more and more applications. Uh, 
Uh, step five and six, essentially the, the continuous monitoring of the parking lot to make sure that students are following procedures. We know that it'll come with a lot of reminders since it's been a lot of years. It's been about five years since we've had permits. So it'll be a lot of reminders for our students, again, like I mentioned, through parent square messaging and then messaging over our intercom and speakers continuously to make sure our students are uh, understanding and following the policies. Okay, that's that. I know that a lot of questions could be asked, but I want to keep it uh, uh, short and to the point, and that's just that we're looking at an orderly opportunity to make sure that our students who are in our lot are safe and for us to be able to identify whose cars are in the lot by make and model, it allows us to be able to identify folks uh, more cohesively. Uh, this is all about student safety and staff safety and uh, the incidents that we had this year, though they've been slim, uh, they've always presented opportunities for us in need of being able to identify who folks are. Uh, and as we don't have access, quick access to understanding uh, license plates and who they belong to, it's for us providing another opportunity to have a database on campus that allows us to identify uh, the owners of particular vehicles. So, any questions? I, I have said one question about um, enforcing the, the pass. Mm -hmm. what, what will that look like? I, um, if somebody's parking without the permit, what, what is the consequence? So the consequence, if we, if we first don't have a permit, what we would uh, look to do is uh, to place a note on that car, looking for an opportunity to engage with that particular student and understand who they are, uh, so that we can have a conversation about them getting their proper permit. So ultimately, the enforcement is gonna be essentially, I'd say the end of that road is a conversation with families. If they can't afford a particular permit, it's providing that permit to them, but it's ultimately getting them in line so that we can have their car on a database with our school, just to keep them safe and orderly, so that we can identify who belongs on campus, or who is on campus. Yeah, I was actually going to ask the same question, but thank you for answering. Um, but I do want to clarify a couple of things. Um, I think you may have mentioned this already, but I just want it to be repeated. I mean, just for me at least. Um, so the permit is uh, $5 for the mm -hmm. entire year. Yes. Am I correct? No, thank you. Yes, and it's by school year because we'll purchase them for that particular school year. Okay. Ultimately, the, the, that idea is that we, we don't have continually more folks coming onto campus. Uh, in years that follow for extra parking or for long stay parking, but we want to make sure the cars that are on campus actually belong to students who are supposed to be there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And the second part is um, we are not mandating students. Are we mandating or we are not? Mandating that uh, they students have Students who are driving the car to have a permit. Correct. The, the mandate would be for students to have a permit uh, when they're parking in our lot. Yeah. And if they are not, then as a... Uh, um, President Olson asked, we are going to talk to them. Yes. And request them to. Yeah, essentially what we're looking for is not an opportunity to punish students for wrongdoings. It's an opportunity to have conversations so that way we can have students following procedures. I can speak to Mountain House as a whole and say that we've got very compliant students and families. Uh, ultimately, I don't foresee it being a large issue. Ultimately, it's going to be that, that enforcement is going to take a little bit of time in terms of the continual patrolling of the lot to ensure that we are checking in with students. A lot of that is gonna come in the form of morning uh, patrol as students are entering our parking lot to ensure that everyone who is coming in is seeing a friendly face, waving to them if they, don't have a, if they don't have a tag in their car to make sure that they do in fact get one. And we can take things down that way. So rather than hunting students down and wasting our manpower throughout the day, what we're looking at is opportunities to start those conversations and get kids registered with us uh, to again, ensure that only people who are on campus, the cars that are on campus belong to students who are in fact there and that they don't belong to anybody else who shouldn't be on campus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so the, the goal is to make sure that people who aren't supposed to be on campus aren't on campus. Um, and I can see how that would work during the, well, actually I can't see how that would work during the morning drop off because you got a bunch of parents that aren't gonna have tags dropping kids off. Um, how will we identify at that time, how will we identify well, that car doesn't have a parking pass, but it's okay because it's a parent dropping off, and that car doesn't have a parking pass, but it's not okay because this guy, this person, I'm guy, gal, whatever, um, it is going to park. I, um, is one of my questions. Another question is, okay, students, they're the ones, they're going to be the ones that have the parking pass, and they're the ones that are supposed to be. So them having a parking pass, they were okay parking either way understanding that them being on a list so that we can identify that is a good thing. Don't have a problem with that. But the people that park, it, it, it sounds like what we're saying is there's a problem with people parking in our parking lot that shouldn't be there. 
or is it we want to make sh like is there a problem because if there is i'm not sure how this solves it or um is it that we just want to make sure there isn't a problem so we'd like to take both uh, a reactive and proactive approach to this. The proactive side is to answer that first question. How do we ensure that people who are on, in our parking lot do in fact belong there? So currently we are not experiencing, or are we, I should say, we can't be made aware of whether or not people are parking on the lot while students are in attendance right now while we don't have permits. So some of the issues we've tackled this year, just to ensure student safety and their interaction with folks who don't belong has been, uh, well, the, uh, <clears throat> I'll say the DoorDash debacle is ensuring that our students aren't in contact with community members who may or may not be questionable, bringing them lunch, to which we can't verify what's in those bags. Uh, ultimately, uh, we are taking a proactive approach to ensure that people are not on campus that don't belong there. Uh, the part to which there's a, there's, there's a whole scope in terms of how we'd walk that process out, and then we have to do that in the safety meetings that follow. But ultimately ensuring, uh, if, if you're driving through to the school, you'll notice there's drive-through lanes in both the front and then through the back, uh, and those have and opportunities to enter into the student parking, but those themselves are not parking lots as they were. That front lot would be the only exception, that we're, that small uh, sliver of a lane, and that is gonna be relegated to visitor parking. So that'll be different than what we're talking about on the side. So we wanna make sure our students are funneling into their parking spaces, and we would have campus supervisors posted up as we're beginning this process to ensure that we're able to flag students and remind them to get themselves parking passes. So there'll be an exuberant amount of communication around that, uh, both to families in the summer and then next school year, should the board approve. Uh, ultimately, the opportunity, like I said, is proactive for folks who are not on campus. And as we see our community growing at this point in time, uh, like I mentioned, we're, uh, well, the board is very aware. We're expanding to the point where we're running at a short on classrooms. Um, I can only anticipate. Really? We, that's that's <laughs> news to us. Every, every question I get is, are those new buildings done yet? Right. <laughs> uh, we'll start soon. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's looking at how we expand and grow. Um, having worked in comprehensive high schools in the Central Valley where we've ex expanded beyond our capacity, uh, it's, it's having an opportunity to get ahead of what could be, and that's an overfilled parking lot. Um, I don't want to hyper-focus on what that will look like when we have too many cars, because right now we have plenty of space. But it's uh, ultimately understanding and assessing the situation to ensure that uh, everybody who is in our parking lot is in fact uh, has their car registered with us so that we can identify uh, if there's accidents or things that are taking place we can identify those cars by make and model because they've registered with us but the visitor parking lot won't require a placard or correct. pass correct so um how, how does that i'm just trying to like comprehend how that helps us know who shouldn't be on campus because if i don't belong on campus and i go park in the visitor parking lot I can get into campus. The visitor parking should be more scarcely uh, filled because of the fact that we wouldn't have necessarily, unless we've got an assembly with folks visiting campus. And to that, to that end, we make our campus groups aware. Uh, and we're relegating folks to different areas if we're anticipating uh, groups of 100 or more, for example. Uh, award ceremonies bring in all sorts of different folks, and we can anticipate those and plan those accordingly. So the semantics of it are very detailed depending upon the event. I can tell you, uh, I could probably spend 24 hours here talking to you about all the different ways in which we'd approach those. But that visitor lot is essential for us to have uh, designated visitor parking. If you've been there, you've seen that we have a couple of spots. But any given day when we're running one IEP meeting, we may potentially have four visitors on campus in separate cars. Uh, and we don't really have enough space uh, to accommodate those folks. When we run our walking and talking visits, it's, it's hard to accommodate because we don't have enough. And the visitor parking lot, you said, would be at the front of the school. So uh, does that mean the designated staff parking lots, staff won't be able to park I in that area? You'll open up more of those spots for visitors or I I'm just... Yes, and ultimately we, we've got the staff lot as you enter the school. Uh, we have a staff lot in the back. We're trying to make sure that we, we keep our staff lots as separate as possible so we're not having some of the run-ins that we've had. Um, the specifics are we had, we had an, an accident between a student and a staff member's car in that visitor parking earlier this year. We had one just four weeks ago in the actual student lot. And so we're trying to make sure that we are taking safeguards uh, to, to secure the safety of both students and staff, uh, and then being able to identify those vehicles if they are not properly identified. Okay. So at, at this point in time, I, I don't have the ability to, like I said, check into um, license plates. And so we're just making sure that we have the ability to do that and follow through with our students. Uh, we have a uh, fantastic camera system that allows us to do that tracking, and we wanna make sure that we can follow through uh, so that we can have those conversations uh, when people uh, need to be spoken with. Do you have some mechanism to keep students from just saying, I don't need to pass, I'll just park in the visitor's parking? We do. 
I've got campus supervisors and administrators. <laughs> and so at this point in time, uh, having worked at high schools in, in those spaces before, uh, I can tell you there's, there's a proactive approach that we're taking to bringing people on board to the vision that we're doing. And so that's my hope is to execute that first and foremost. I can speak to some compliance in our community. I think we've got folks who generally want to follow the rules. So that's the hope from the initial onset of this policy. And so the hope is to have something that becomes less of a challenge as, as a school year goes, goes on. Ultimately, it also comes in the form of, of manning security in different, uh, different stations as people are coming onto campus to ensure that only people who park in those spaces uh, belong there. So the longer answer to that is, again, uh, having the right security uh, and administrators in place to ensure that that is happening. Um, the proactive approach, I can tell you, is like we're saying, make sure it's communicated clearly and articulately so that our folks know what they're doing. All right, thank you. Um, I would very much appreciate the visitor parking because every time I go to the high school, it's like an Easter egg hunt finding a, a parking spot. <laughs> um, don't, I, I wanna say don't, don't take my questions as opposition to the idea. Um, I was just scratching my head, so I appreciate uh, the articulation. Um, you did mention one thing that I, it's kind of a, uh, a question. You mentioned uh, trap fencing, for lack of a better word, right? So that people kind of funnel through the administration building. Um, in your experience, do the high school students that leave through those gates, are they pretty good about shutting the gate behind them? <laughs> I wish I could say they are. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I can tell you I appreciate about the facility that we have is that our gates uh, do in fact lock. I've worked in facilities with push bars and students are notorious for pushing bars open, leaving them open and providing the opportunities for folks to, to wander into the high school. We have a very secure campus and I think with the way that we've uh, funneled students into the front of the school, uh, no one goes unnoticed, uh, whether it's extended lunch uh, or it's coming in the morning or the afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to item B, um, DARE graduation. Staff report? Uh, yeah, we just wanted to communicate a new date on, I think it's Hanson, uh, 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 DARE graduation. Okay. And that is it. Are you going to give us the date or just the Oh, it's in the, it's in the packet. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> ma'am. Looking at ma'am over there. She's going to pull it up for everybody. Well, can I screw up anything else? Yeah. <laughs> May 13th at 6 p.m. at Hanson School. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moving on to item 12, calendar. Item A, Thursday, March 21st, 2024, is the TED Ed event at 6 p.m. in the Mountain House High School Theater. Item B, Monday through Friday, March 25th through 29th is our spring break, no school for students. Item C, Wednesday, March 27th, 2024 is the LUSD safety drill, 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Mountain House High School. Item D, Wednesday, April 17th, 2024 is the wellness committee meeting at 3.45 p.m. in the Professional Development Center. Item E, Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, is also the next regular governing board meeting, 7 p.m. in the district office boardroom. And item F, Thursday, April 18th, 2024, is the joint DLAC and education committee meeting at 6.30 p.m. in the professional development center. In a moment, we will be adjourning to closed session where we will be discussing the following. Item A, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, complaint, government code, section 549, Five, seven, and item B, Conference with Real Property Negotiators, Government Code, Section 54956.8. I will entertain a motion. Move to adjourn to closed session. Second. On a motion by Trustee Boulay and seconded by Trustee Pombo, student trustee preferential vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the motion passes with five ayes. We are adjourned to closed session at 8.03 p.m.